Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Dawn from Frosty X Stitch. This is my 18th floss tube. I didn't think I would do this many, but here I am, still going. I've missed out for a few weeks and this is not my normal recording day, but I was having a bad time and so I went for a shower and decided to do a floss tube. So I'm here. Um, I got this mug out especially um, for St. Patrick's Day and then in that week I didn't do floss tube so this is Happy St. Patrick's Day everybody um, belatedly mm. I love this mug it's got all this it's when you go over it it's like knitting it's it's like a knitted mug and you can feel it it's nice um, it's knitting, not cross stitch, but that's fine because um, the couple that sent this to me, um, I've known them now for quite a few years, and they have helped me over some really bad, bad, bad times in my life, and I love them to bits, even though I have never met them in person. I met them, long story. Uh, we're still friends, um, we don't communicate that often at the moment, that's fine, that happens with friendships but we're still friends and I love the mug that they gave me, I use it, it's nice. So thank you Morris and Camilla, so thank you very much, I think of you always when I see it. I also told you you'll never see the same mug twice in my floss tubes. So, I'll have to do quite a lot of floss tubes until I get back to the same mug. Yeah, so let's get going on my floss tube and not hang around. Um, the first thing I want to go into is I watched uh, Ginger Gerald's, um, I don't know what he called it, but he did a segment, he actually did a separate um, video on copyright laws. Now, Ginger Gerald is not a lawyer, he said that himself, and this is his research. So, he's not a lawyer, and it's his research. And I'm not going to contradict him in anything, because that's what he said is, is absolutely correct. Um, he also mentions that what he researched is um, for the US only. So, um, it doesn't apply to other countries, but then he was very general in what he said. He um, explains what is copyright, what is um, trademark. So he did do it very general, and he also said that if somebody really wants to know, he can do more research, but it will be his research, and he's not a lawyer. Um, I would just like to also say, which he also mentioned, that US only and floss tube is international. So the even the EU which he mentions um has copyright laws but it's not the same in every country in the EU because in the EU you can be um in different parts of the EU. So um England for instance doesn't have the Euro, they still have pounds. So and Switzerland does not belong to the EU, but is a part of Schengen, which is a part of the EU, which uh, regulates um, pers people coming in and out of the country. So um, even there, there's all different things. And then, of course, you have all the countries all over the world, and each country has their own law. So that's just something that you should consider about copyright and copyright laws, and especially in showing charts on a floss tube YouTube video which can go around the world. Now my take on the whole thing is I'm not a lawyer. Um, I know a bit about copyright laws when it comes to music, um, films, stuff like that. But I also don't know anything about cross stitch copyright laws. Um, I know artwork. Artwork is very difficult and is a huge segment of copyright law in its own right. But I take it like this, um, if I'm 
um, a very creative person, take um, Priscilla for instance, she's very creative and she designed something on a chalkboard. So that's her creation, that came from her. It was in her mind, in her hands, she creates this. So that's her piece of work. So you, cannot, you should not steal it. Now, if she allows, you can take a picture. But you cannot, it's her piece of work. Now, she gives this to Kathy Haberman, and Kathy then takes this piece of artwork and makes a cross stitch pattern out of that. Now that's Kathy's work. Now I don't know if it's going to be Kathy's work or the company she works for, whatever, but that's her work or that company's work. So if I now buy a pattern from them, they give me the right to use that pattern to make cross stitch. Now I can show the pattern like hold it up quickly like this and show you the pattern. Now do I want to do that? Do I not want to do that? Am I allowed to do it? Am I not allowed to do it? Um, what are the rules like when I'm stitching a head and I'm showing the way that I am stitching a head? I'm doing a tutorial, I'm showing that I take my piece, my, my one page of hate and I just show a bit of it so that you can see that I'm like how I highlight it when I stitch my piece. Now am I allowed to show that, yes or no? I'd go and i decide that um, if that's my work, if the pattern that that was designed, like if I was Priscilla and that was my chalk piece and somebody shows that the chalk piece, like the, the, the pattern, not not the pattern, the, 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 the chart that you can see in the front, the, like the, the picture of it. Now that's fine. You can show that because other people can see it, want to buy it. So that's actually good. Now if I show the chart itself, like the little symbols for the crosses and everything, and I show it in a way that somebody can copy it. I don't want that because, well I've already got about 300 subscribers so not that many people would, would like copy it from me. But let's say I've got 3000 subscribers and I show the full chart with the symbols and everything and I show that on my YouTube video. Somebody takes a screenshot and can then all 3000 subscribers or how many that I've got can take a screenshot and can use that and take that pattern. So Priscilla doesn't get any money and Kathy Haberman doesn't get any money and the company that would sell it to me doesn't get any money and that's clearly not not okay. So um, if it's my piece of work how much would I allow somebody to show? Now in hades, if you show one one page of a haid, nobody can stitch that because you don't know the, you don't know the symbols. You can't even see the pattern in a haid chart. You can't. A dimensions kit, even if it's got more than one page, you can actually see quite a lot of what it's going to be. So there, I will be careful and maybe you want to show just a tiny bit if you want to show like how to do back stitching through symbols or like um, fractional stitches what they look like in the chart you just take a tiny chart if nobody knows the chart you cannot copy anything from it so that's the way that I see it and I'm pretty sure that if you go along and you, you, you're sort of organizing your stuff and you show the, the, the chart just it's sort of flipping through the police is not going to come and arrest you for it. So don't do that. But don't go and say, I'm showing the chart, I'm allowed to. Because that's definitely not true. Because you're showing it to the whole world and that's not okay. So that's just my two cents on the subject. Um, I just always think of what if it's my work.
that you're showing. Now like if you do a giveaway, let's say I've stitched a piece and I've got a chart and I have a thousand subscribers and I'm going to do a giveaway. Well, of course I'm allowed to give away that chart because I might have bought it just for this person. I might have stitched it before and then given it on. That doesn't matter because that's one chart. That doesn't break the bank. Now, it's actually good if I pass that chart because if it's a chart that's still available, this person might then receive the chart, stitch it up, really like it, check out who's the designer or what's the company or are there more in this series and go and buy them. So it's actually very good to pass the stash sometimes but always be a bit careful what you do and don't just distribute stuff because you think oh I got a free pattern I might as well share that. That's also not okay. If you got a free pattern and you want to pass the stash, pass the stash but don't show it on Instagram the whole pattern don't show it on YouTube just be a bit careful and think about it first okay enough um, number two yeah I've taken that out uh, it's not interesting um, I have a shout out I have two shout outs the first one the first shout out is for Stephanie in stitches and Stephanie is with a Y at the end. Um, I saw her on Instagram posting that she's now doing floss tube, so I went over and I checked her out and I liked her. She's nice. Um, she is on the lookout. She wants to organize an ornament exchange. Um, like an open ornament exchange. It's not, I don't think it's um, for Christmas or anything. I think it's just an ornament exchange in any form. She's not quite, she's, I don't think she's quite decided yet and she hasn't got very many responses. Now she hasn't, her floss tube channel, uh, when I subscribed she had about 15 people subscribed to her. When I went back now she has about 60, I don't know how many she's got now, but she doesn't, can't reach quite as many people as would be good because she really wants to do it and I'm pretty sure that lots of you want to do an ornament exchange and would like to happily be in one. I don't because um, I can't, if I know there's a deadline to my stitching, I can't stitch it. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I get a block and I can't stitch it and I'm not very good at finishing so um, I commented that I think it's a really good idea and she should mention it again, she should try and put it out on, on Instagram, Flosstube, Facebook that she wants to do an ornament exchange. So go and check her out if you're interested. I'll link her below, that's Stephanie with a Y in stitches. Um, she's also very nice and um, I like the Flosstube. She's got two out now I think, yeah. So check her out and if you like ornament ex exchanges please let her know because I think it's a good idea and it's nice. It's nice to give one and it's nice to receive one. And the other shout out goes to Express Life Tifa. Now I think I I can't remember why she said that, that that's her name. I somehow it went past me. I forgot. I didn't write it down. I'm really sorry about that. Um she's a really nice bubbly person and um I just want to shout her out because she was really nervous, but it was a good, was a good floss tube, floss tube. So give her some love. Check her out. Just I've seen a few new ones now, and lots of them have been shouted out by different people. Um, these two are just two that I've chosen to shout out. I'm watching a few other new ones, but haven't really got round to that, so I can't shout them out yet because I haven't watched them. Sorry about that. But I do try and comment on, on newcomers in Flosstube just to sort of say hello um, that somebody's watched and not just put a like on or just views but I actually just say hello and welcome and um, that's what people did on mine and it was really greatly appreciated so I try and sort of give that back. Um, I had a finish. I stitched something and finished it. Yes, that does happen in my life. 
Um, unfortunately, it's already on its way to its recipient, but I'll show you what it looks like finished. Here. And what I fully have, how it looks fully finished. Here. So, yeah. That piece is on its way. It's been for a few weeks, but it's going a long way and it's going in snail mail, so I don't know when it'll get there. Who knows? Um, so, that was number five. Number six, um, show you my stitching. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe you're surprised. I'm trying to um, do a floss tube in sunlight, only sunlight because um, today the sun is out, it's shining, it's spring, we have 12 degrees, it, at night it goes below freezing. Um, but I still have my snow picture up there because two days ago I had 10 centimeters of snow on my car. So um, we had another week of winter. But it, temperatures are going up and down and the whole thing is, I don't know. So I'm still in winter. I still haven't had my winter yet. So. I can't get that right. Yeah, it'll change sometime. Um, so let's see. I've stitched on my linen piece. As you know, I had to frog and then had to restitch, and it went in timeout. Um, but that's as far as I am at the moment. Um, yeah, there was sort of heat. I had to go back there and do it. So now there's another border just like this one down here and I wanted to stop there but I left it open with the amount of fabric that I've got if I'm going to go on with the pattern right at the top and I think I might do that. Um, even though I'd, I've decided now that linen or this kind of linen which is it's, it's very flimsy and it's not very easy to stitch in hand is not really my cup of tea so I don't know there's this different linen I'm pretty sure about it and I might get to use it sometime but as I can't go and buy it at the moment um, yeah so I don't like flimsy linen that's just something yeah um, I've done some stitching on let it snow bungalow not very much but I am still stitching on it and um, yeah I've, I've moved up to, to blocks of colour. I, I prefer blocks of colour somehow, I don't know why um, compared to, to little stitches here and there at the bottom so I've moved up there. Um, and we have a Facebook group Facebook group um, for chalk pieces. Um, we've opened it up to chalk pieces, any kind of chalk pieces um, winter pieces, snow pieces. Um, you're free to join. You just have to answer a few questions to just let me know that you're a stitcher. Um, even if you don't want to stitch a chalk piece, if you want to stitch something else, it doesn't matter. You can still join. You can come and watch. Because um, me and Shelley from Shelley's KX Stitch, we just want to see the pieces stitched. Um, we started with Let It Snow Bungalow, but we also like the chalk, the farm fresh eggs one. I love that one. Um, unfortunately it came out after I bought this one. So uh, and I'm doing a stitch from Stash and I'm a slow stitcher so I haven't bought that one but I might buy it later on. Um, we like seeing pictures and we, we can't do the hashtag search. As Shelley's not on Instagram anymore and I'm not going on Instagram at the moment that often so it's easier for us to have that in a group. I'll link the group below so you can check that out. Um, like I say, you just have to be a stitcher. That's a big requirement. You don't even have to stitch a chalk piece. Um, yeah. Then I'm steadily still stitching on my head. I'm still on my first my first page, but I'm slowly getting there. Um, now that I sort of can see that there's a pattern in there, um, it does actually motivate me. And 
I asked for lots and lots of advice and I got lots and lots of advice um, because I wanted to change to half crosses. I'm doing full crosses at the moment, 18 count. Um, so I tried that. Um, I tried with three strands, four strands and somehow it just... No, it doesn't work. So I've gone back to doing crosses, full crosses, and it feels right now. And that's the way I'm going to go on this one. But any other hate that I'm going to start is going to be half crosses, definitely. <laughs> I'm not doing full crosses again. Um, I got my um, September Sapphire Fairy out again. Um, I just did a bit, I think it was on that sleeve there. Yeah, just um, the sleeve bit, yeah, the sleeve here a bit and I think going down there a bit. Just not very much because it requires me to get out a lot of stuff because I um, backstitch and I bead as I go. Maybe I could show you the whole thing because she's a beauty. She's so lovely and the colours are amazing and but there's so many blended threads in there it's it's tough to work because you constantly have to change and sim so many different symbols and everything but she is she's lovely and I want to have her finished for my birthday my birthday's in September so that's my goal um, I'm pretty sure I can reach it if if I stitch that's yeah. I'm really sorry, I've just washed my hair, it's gone all over the place, I don't know what. But I'm pretty sure you don't care about my hair, you care about my stitching. So, um, yep, yeah. and my last piece that I've been working on, um, the Full Calvaridge Fanatics group um, has the spring style. And it's basically a stitch on anything to do with spring. Um, Now this is my oldest whip and it's been calling to me since the beginning of the year and I had marked it for this style so I didn't go back to it. It's um, a dimensions kit and like I said it's my oldest whip and I wrapped it in paper and it says 9th of March 2016 so that's where I'm at. And it's it's quite, yeah, I lost interest in it because, as you can see, I've done one wing and then you have to go over and do the second wing, which is exactly the same, just in the opposite direction. And it's, it's, it's quite a lot of colour changes and it's black on black. Black on black is worse than white on white. But I don't mind stitching on black. But this is a full coverage piece and so I can use it for this style and that's what I'm doing. I started on I think the second day of the style and I only got a few stitches in on, on the brown there because I got a headache and I had to stop. I'd, yeah, but the style goes on for three months so I'm pretty sure I can get some more stitching in if I finish it or not, I don't know. But yeah, so that's my stitching. Um, the other pieces are still around, um, I haven't sort of, it's not that I've lost interest in them, it's just that I'm concentrating more on certain projects, I want to finish certain things and I want to like finish something before I start something new because I've got too many whips and I, I was, well, I haven't been stitching that long. And I'm actually a one person sti uh, one project stitcher, actually. And I've got something like 15 whips and it's too many for me. I need to finish stuff. And as most of my projects are really big, I need to finish something. Well, that's why I did this uh, blue rose in between. Um, that was a thank you to somebody. Um, and that was good for me, but then of course I, I only stitched on that didn't stitch on any of my other projects. So that's just the way it works. And um, number seven. Um, at the moment, <laughs> yeah, um, finding parking spaces here at the moment is going to be really difficult because um, 
In Basel, we've got Basel World going on now. It started on Thursday. It's not quite a week. And Basel World is the biggest um, watch and jewellery um, exhibition in the world. And it goes on for a week. And the hotels and restaurants in Basel make, I think, a third of the, the yearly money revenue whatever they do in this one week and lots of people around me because it's it's there okay sort of like there if you would walk a straight line it's about 200 meters to Basel world um, yeah so lots of people could or do actually um, rent out the flat um, you can sort of rent it to a company and the company will come in clean the whole flat and then rent it out to however many people they can get in and on the last day when they go out move out they'll go and clean the flat again or the house like my parents neighbors they rent out the whole house um, if you rent out your flat for 10 days you can get two months rent for those 10 days so it's really it's it's something that lots of people actually do because the hotels are booked all of them in Basel in the surrounding areas even in Germany and France everything that has a bed is booked out and um, I see it in a place next to my parents they rent out the whole house um, because they've got a little place they can go to just about half an hour away from here and the people who are there they come and they, they come with a little suitcase and they, they go in and half an hour later they're dressed in their suits and have their little badges on there and off they walk go to Basel World and then they, they come back change then they go out for supper and some of them don't even come home to sleep they just go back to work the next day and so it's easy money. Um, I can't do it because I don't have anywhere else to go and sleep, so I can't do that. Um, I rented my room out once, and that was when we had um, the Euro. Yeah, it was Euro 2000. That was the um, football, and uh, one of the places that they were playing was Basel, and when the Netherlands were playing and they were really really good and I so wanted them to win anyway they were playing I think against Portugal in Basel they were playing in Basel and I had I said that my room is for rent um, but somehow they, they didn't manage to rent it out I don't know why but on the day that the Netherlands played in Basel about two days before I got a phone call saying that my room is rented um, Saturday to Sunday so okay my room was there I just put a mattress in my living room and they left in the morning and they drove all the way to Basel they got to sorry about that they got to um, the customs at about three o'clock in the afternoon they were here a quarter of an hour later Two men came in, very friendly, hello, where's our room, went into the room, changed, came out completely in orange. They wanted to know where can we go and pick up our ticket. So I showed them on a the map, and it's there now. And I said, okay, and where is Messeplatz? And I said, well, that's just there. Um, so they went, got their ticket, had to then come back. And the, all the supporters of the Netherlands I don't know how many there were. It was it was great. They all met up on this Messeplatz and then walked the whole way through town together out to where the, the football field is and those who had the ticket went in and those who didn't have a ticket walked all the way back into town and had the biggest feast of their life and it was great. Unfortunately they lost. Uh, it didn't matter because the Netherlands, they can, they can have a feast, whatever. They lose, they win, it doesn't matter. They had 
such a great time that these two men they came home at about five o'clock in the morning drunk as hell but I didn't hear it they didn't make a noise I just saw all the beer cans that it disposed of um, and as I didn't know you know two men what would they eat for breakfast I sort of supplied some eggs and some bacon I also supplied, supplied some muesli you know some cornflakes and some bread and some of this and fruit and whatever and I, because I, I had no idea what they want they ate everything everything they were eating for one and a half hours they started off with bacon and eggs they went over to muesli they ate all my cornflakes my frosties everything they had their fruit they they basically wiped me clean my fridge was empty and then they went got changed and said goodbye and they left and the wife of one of them phoned me in the evening and said they arrived thank you for putting them up they had a great time and um, I got one of these sort of um, flower necklaces in orange because I said I am for you for your team but I have not got any orange in my wardrobe so I have nothing to wear and I said well here's your so I had this around my neck while I was watching the football it was great it was just that was fantastic um, and they had a good time <laughs> and I got quite a good good lot of money for it <laughs> just but yeah uh, I got paid for the food I just had to show the receipt and they couldn't believe that they ate all that but got paid for it so yeah so now we've got Basel World on so we have all sorts of celebrities here um, we, we usually have George Clooney and Leonardo DiCaprio and whoever um, lots of these um, companies are quite rich so they actually have celebrities come especially for them because they also do all the ad advertisements for them so they come but it's nothing special anymore because you get so many celebrities coming for Basel World then for Art Basel which is in a few months time and we've got um, Swiss Indoors which is the tennis um, which is quite famous due to Roger Federer, of course. Um, just s sort of short. Oh, I'm famous. Um, my mom used to <laughs> babysit Roger Federer when he was tiny. Um, but he's a lot younger than me, so I can remember him being with us, but I didn't have anything to do with him. Uh, my mom remembers Lynette, his mom, but that was so many years ago, so yeah. Um, I've seen quite a lot of famous people because, yeah, due to Basel World, Art Basel, and all the other, we have we have so many things going on in Basel. It's such a an international place, and it's it's a great town to live in. Um, it's got an old city, um, and new parts, and yeah, we have lots of events going on that most people don't realise and especially especially Swiss people don't realise how much actually happens in Basel um, and how much politics happens in Basel that actually affects the whole of the world because people meet at these events people who come to Basel world to buy watches um, or jewellery or just precious stones or whatever and it's not only in this place, it's all over Basel and these are people with money, people with influence, people who know people, it's, it's, there's lots and lots and they, they, they get together, you know, and they go and have their meal together in the evening and they sit there and they talk about world politics and the people with money are the people who are actually the ones with power and so it's it's interesting what's going on in Basel that the rest of the world doesn't even know about and yes we had WEF the World Conference in Davos everybody knows about that but that gets covered by news channels and there's press everywhere whereas Basel World it's you have to be one of the select 
people to be able to enter and a normal person like me I mean I can't afford a ticket to go <laughs> I could buy I don't know watches for the rest of my life with money for one ticket so I don't go I don't get to see it and I mean the build up for Basel World it's it's an event that's a few days long and they know that they have clients from all over the world coming especially from Asia or the Emirates I don't know from wherever and they have people coming to set up they they don't just have a market stall like you used to they build buildings inside it's they have like two or three story buildings and they have to be special they 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 have designers they have architects that design a building for them with their their logo and their corporate identity and it has to be a different one every year they can never reuse anything no carpet no no window no nothing they can reuse nothing everything gets designed specifically for these few days it gets built up they take about two months to build up all the stoles and they're not stoles they're real buildings in there um, just for these few days and then rip it all out after they're gone it takes about a week and the whole thing's ripped out and everything goes and gets thrown away burnt gone not recycled and it, 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 it's horrendous I mean if you think the money that goes into this event and the money that they get out of it because most of the profit that these companies make is about half of their yearly profit goes in those few days and just to think about that it's amazing um, yeah I've talked too much I'm sorry I have this tendency of starting to talk and then I can't stop because I don't have friends I don't talk I don't talk at work anymore I don't talk to anybody um, so once I start talking I just it just comes out so I'm really sorry about that but I'm okay it's not too long so yeah I hope to be back on a two-week basis to show some stitching if I have stitching to show otherwise I come back whenever um, but you'll find me in the usual spots if you want to if you don't want to that's fine just click on um, yeah that's it from me so happy stitching and keep on making floss tubes I'm dreading Stitch Mania a bit because my queue of floss tubes to watch is pretty long and during Stitch Mania people will put out even more videos so I don't know how I'm going to watch them all but um, I'll try and I'll try and leave comments so that you know that I've watched so yeah that's it for me have a nice weekend and uh, bye